Hey there guys, welcome back for another Mortal Realms painting video. This week I am painting the Sigmarite Brazier from issue 66 of the Mortal Realms magazine. And uh, jumping straight in here, I'm using some Eshin Grey um, over the initial grey primer um, just to get a nice even base coat. So I'm just using a bit of an old tatty uh, basing brush here. And uh, once I've got a good coat on that of that on, I then switch over to using some Dawnstone and using the messed up bristles on this brush, um, I'm using a stippling technique um, just with a little bit of paint on the end just to, um, like I say, stipple um, the Dawnstone up and down the, uh, the model here, just sort of randomly trying to get some random spots and stuff on there. And what this is going to do is start to create a bit of a weathered stone look. I'll then switch back to the Esh and Grey and uh, just sort of neaten up a few areas if I think the um, the Dawnstone has clumped together too much. Then again I'll just go back in and break that up. And it's just a, you know, a bit of backwards and forwards between the two colours um, just to get a nice mottled um, sort of stone effect. And once that's done, I'll just take um, a medium dry brush here, remove as much of the paint as I can. This is using the Dawnstone. And just very lightly dry brush backwards or forwards across the uh, the model, just picking out some of the more um, raised edges, the step and uh, corners and bits, bits like that. Um, there's barely any paint going on here, just enough to, to pick off a few details. Right, and once that's done, I'll just take a non-oil wash and apply this all over the model. Uh, what this is going to do is darken down and sort of blend in the Dawnstone and the Eshen Grey a little and stop it from looking so um, contrasted between each other. Um, it just gives a much better stone finish once this is dry. Obviously it's important to let it pull up a little bit on um, sort of steps and ledges and up against um, hard edges and details and stuff but you do want a smooth flat coat um, over any flat areas you don't want to leave any of the um, the undertone there the underpaint otherwise you're going to end up with um, marks and streaks and stuff that you probably don't want I'll then uh, set that aside and let that dry for about 15 minutes before coming back to it Right, so after about 10 minutes the non oil has pretty much dried um, but what I do is move on to the uh, the metal part at the top um, just whilst it finishes drying the non oil so I can get this done a little bit quicker um, it's dried to the point where it's not going to run um, back on itself so I can hold it upside down um, etc and for the fire pit on top I'm just taking some um, Abaddon black and just applying this, making sure to get um, between the uh, the railing part there. Not sure what to call it, but yeah, making sure that I cover everything on top of this with the uh, the Abaddon black, um, including the area in the center on the inside. Okay, so by the time I finished painting the Abaddon black, the um, the stonework has. Uh, finished drying the non oil is now dry so I'm just going back in with some Dawnstone and just picking out some of the details um, for example this um, I think it's supposed to be uh, the Comet so I'm uh, just picking out the, the you know the streaks of the Comet here as well as the steps for the um, sort of the base of the brazier here And finally, to finish off the stonework, I'm just adding in a little bit of weathering here with some um, Athonian camo shade, um, just sort of splotching it on um, to act as moss. Um, I could go a little bit more detail with this if I wanted to and add the mossy texture um, that I showed how to make in a previous video. But uh, the green sort of weathering, slimy sludge effect, whatever you want to call it, uh, works well enough just for uh, a quick piece of terrain. And finally for the fire pit on the top here I'm just using some iron breaker 
and uh, painting it, painting it up. Um, I'll then add a, a wash of long oil, let that dry, and then dry brush back over the top with the iron breaker. Now you could add um, rust effects with this, uh, obviously using the typhus corrosion and the rise of rust, or your preferred uh, rust method. Um, you could do, you know, any kind of weathering you wanted to. I wanted pretty much a clean look to this, uh, to the top part. I feel that it wouldn't get too much rust with the, the fire being there, uh, that it would be a little bit more resistant to weathering. So I didn't bother with any weathering over the top, just the, the iron breaker with the null oil and then the dry brush of iron breaker over the top. And that will be the brazier side of this done. So with the brazier done, it's time to move on to the fire itself. And for this, I'm using um, some Uriel yellow, or Uriel yellow, and just getting a nice even coverage. Now, as we all know, yellow is a horrible uh, color to work with. You could maybe go with uh, Troll Slayer orange under this first, and then the yellow over the top. Uh, but me, I just go just <laughs> be a little bit pers persistent with it and go I think about six coats to try and get this even they are obviously thinned down so that you don't clog up um, some of the the dips and details within the fire but uh yeah it's yellow it takes a while just be patient with it get it on nice and even nice and thin and uh, multiple layers once that's dry what I then do is the bottom half of this model I'll apply some Yorio Yellow, this is uh, once it's all dried, and whilst this bottom half is still wet, I'll take some of uh, Troll Slayer Orange, and working from the top, I will bring it down into that yellow a little bit, so the, the wet yellow that I just applied, and what this is going to do is blend it a little bit between the two. Um, it's almost like wet blending, but it, instead of having the colours on the brush for wet blending, the colours are wet on the model. Now obviously this does depend on how um, humid and dry it is um, and how quick you work, but you can get a fairly smooth result with this. Um, as you can see I just go left to right, uh, backwards and forwards working my way down and what that does is start to pick up the yellow and blend it out. I then go back to the paint, work from the top and work my way down again. I'm just layering up this paint over the top of itself to brighten it up a little bit and uh, get it a little bit more concentrated up the top of the flames. I will then do the same thing uh, with Mephiston Red, starting at the top and bringing it down and blending it just into the, uh, the top of the Troll Slayer Orange and then obviously letting it dry slightly, going back onto the top um, you want to let it dry a bit, otherwise you're going to just keep removing the paint off of the, the top here. And then once that has dried, I'll then go back just over the top with some thin, thin down Mephiston Red uh, one final time. Just for the top third, um, just to have a bit of a darker Mephiston Red over the top there. Then finally, to finish this off, I'll take some Abaddon Black and just go over the um, the tips of the flames, um, just carefully picking them off, blending it into that red a little bit, um, just to obviously give that sort of, as it's turning into the smoke on the, uh, the tips. I'll then take the Abaddon Black and go over the coals or wood, whatever they are at the bottom, um, the, you know, the fire material, and paint each of these individually leaving the yellow that I applied at the beginning between each one as this is going to add a glow effect between the uh, the hot, hot coals. Once these are covered in black I'll then use a super thin down um, Mephiston red and allow that to seep in between all of the coals uh, just sort of spotting it about and that will give that glowing effect with the yellow that's already in there um, to the coals. Right, and there we have it. One finished Sigmarite brazier. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you are yet to subscribe to the channel, 
please consider subscribing if you have recently subscribed and a big warm welcome to you I now have a uh, TikTok where I make obviously shorts on um, some of my personal projects as well as some upcoming things for YouTube so if you'd like to follow me over there as well the link for my TikTok is down in the uh, video description below uh, but it is just the the name of the channel all one word in a circle minis on TikTok so do go check that out but until next time guys thank you ever so much for joining me take it easy